of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father Romy. Welcome to the Church of Resurrection. Today, with faith in our hearts, let us offer our beloved Captain Geronimo back to our Heavenly Father. We trust in the Lord Jesus who promised eternal reward for those who believe. And so, as we approach his table, let us first ask him to make us worthy of the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and take care of my brothers and sisters, that I have a great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most beautiful fault. Therefore, I ask for the merit of virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that's honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can be it measured in, terms, in times of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crowd for men, and for unsolid life, the attainment of all age. He who please God, was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away. Lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of the paltry things obscure what is right, and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having, becoming, having become a perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of long career. For his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he spent him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand. Nor did they take it into account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that Jesus, just as Christ, was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, 
we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said in reply, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things had been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. To the family of the late Ephraim Geronimo, especially Arnel and Lilibet Morales, and Morales, this saying is true. It is hard to forget someone who gave so much to remember. Funeral service is always for me an opportunity to think and reflect about death vis-a-vis life. I hope and pray that this would really change our perspective or understanding about death and our life. I am reminded, my brothers and sisters, of an anecdote about death and life who were having a dinner in one of the restaurants here in Tampa. At one point in their conversation, life as death. He said, why do people love me but hate you? And death said in reply, because you are a beautiful lie and I am a painful truth. Certainly, my brothers and sisters, It is a beautiful lie that we would live forever in this world. 
And it is a painful truth that every one of us here will die. Thus, death is always part of our existence. It is part of being human. Psalm 99, my brothers and sisters, attest to it when it says, 70 is the normal age of a man, 80 for those who are strong. And I even may add, 90 for those who are stronger, 100 and 100 plus for those who have been forgotten by God. <laughs> Father Romy and I, we have still eight years to live in this world. We haven't reached the normal age of a man. In God's graciousness, I hope and pray that you and I will reach 70. Nevertheless, my brothers and sisters, the truth is this, that nobody lives in this world without dying. And another thing, my brothers and sisters, the sad thing about death is that nobody of us knows you and I will die. Because death is like a thief that comes in the evening or in the night. My brothers and sisters, last Tuesday, I was saddened and shocked by the death of EJ, the only son of my friend Army and Ted who are from Texas. And I asked one of my friends there, how did EJ die? And the, she told me, Father, he died of car accident. And he was just 21 years old. On the other hand, my brothers and sisters, it is likewise consoling to have a terminal illness. Why? Because once you have a terminal illness, you would approximately know when you will die. And doctors would always tell us, in three months, you will die because of cancer. Ephraim, my brothers and sisters, was a privileged man because he was given the time to prepare for his death. Father Romy and I were able to anoint him. I even gave him an apostolic pardon and absolution for his sins. And somehow he was really prepared. What about us who are left behind? For us who are still young, for all of us who are in our mid-life, and for us who are not so young, what are we going to do, my brothers and sisters? I guess we have just to anticipate, be friend, and prepare for our own death. My novice master, my brothers and sisters, several years ago, told us during our 30-day retreat, 
He said, live its day as if it is your last. As I reflect on this, how are we going to live its day as if it is our last? First, my brothers and sisters, we have to live its day with gratitude and thanksgiving. To live by the moment and not to be anxious and worry about tomorrow. To enjoy every moment with our family and friends. To celebrate the little joys and triumphs of life. To eat ice cream, even though you are diabetic, <laughs> once in a while, because sweetness makes us smile and happy. We have to be proud, my brothers and sisters, for our country, the Philippines, because for the first time in 76 years, it got one gold in the Olympic Games. We have to celebrate for this. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, be at peace with God and always repenting your sins. And never, never procrastinate and postpone your repentance. Always ask God for forgiveness. I will never forget June 28, my brothers and sisters, because that was the time when one of our parishioners came to me at the office to have her confession. And she did confess to me a kind of general confession because she was out of the church for more than 15 years of her life. And know what, my brothers and sisters, after she confessed, five hours after she confessed, she got involved in a car accident and died. To her, God does not desire the death of a sinner, but his repentance. Certainly, sin is our greatest obstacle to our relationship with God. And thus, we have to get rid of our sins as often as we could. Third, my brothers and sisters, Remain or believe and remain with Jesus. Not only in prayer, but most of all in the Holy Eucharist. Taking his own body, his own blood as often as we could. For there in the Eucharist, there is a promise. He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood remains in me, though he dies, and I will raise him up on the last day. Live each day as if it is your loss implies, my brothers and sisters, that we have just to live a good and happy, good and righteous life here on earth. Mind you, my brothers and sisters, God is glorified when we bear good fruits. Remember, my brothers and sisters, the young man who asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to enter eternal life? And Jesus asked him, Why do you call me good? And Jesus told him, Live the commandments. Meaning to say, live the commandments of love. And that is the path 
towards goodness. Finally, my brothers and sisters, pray for a happy and peaceful death every day. Our brother Ephraim, I guessed that he prayed for a happy and peaceful death and his wish was granted. My brothers and sisters, you know the meaning of RIP. It is the acronym for rest in peace. It is, in fact, my brothers and sisters, a prayer. May you rest in peace. Moreover, it is a prayer wishing the person who had died to rest in Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, had claimed that Jesus is our peace because his death on the cross has broken the barrier of hostility of hostility between God and us sinners thus has wrought reconciliation with him his death on the cross has put an end to that enmity oscar wilde was right when he said in a quote death must be beautiful to lie in a soft brown earth with the grasses waving above one's head and to listen in silence to have no yesterday and no tomorrow to forget time to forget life to be at peace my brother Ephraim you have given much to remember. May you rest in peace in God's embrace, for he has expected you in heaven. Amen. For Ephraim, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted into the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Ephraim, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray, pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people, hear the prayers we offer for our brother Ephraim and all who have died, cleanse them of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord.
to drink. Lord God, we plead for this sacrifice we have for the number and contract words. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Ephraim, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling, is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that upon the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, of our Lord Jesus Christ at his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, say, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. And drink this cup. We proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, Edward his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world and remember your servant Ephraim, Heronimo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who were pleasing to you, as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With confidence in the words of Jesus, let us call God our Father as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Lord God, the Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant us strengthened by it. Our brother, our friend, may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Magandang tanghali upo po uli sa inyong lahat. Uh, marami pong salamat, Father Romy, Father Jerome, uh, at sa mga pamilya namin sa BLD, marami pong salamat sa mga kaibigan namin at sa mga kamag-anak na nakiramay sa amin. Maraming marami pong salamat. Salamat po sa uli sa Pagdalo nyo sa huling pagpapaalam namin sa aming tatay Efren. Hayaan nyo pong sabihin ko muli ang, ang nalalaman ko sa tatay Efren na bilang father-in-law, tatay sa mga anak niya, grandfather at asawa ni Nanay Lolit. Bilang father-in-law, siya po ay napakapasensyoso dahil siya po ang unang lumalapit sa akin para magkaayos po kami kapag may, sa oras na may problema kami dalawa. O minsan, hindi niya nalang pinapansin ako na para bang walang nangyari. Thank you, tatay. Si tatay, po, si tatay Efren po bilang tatay sa mga, mga, sa mga anak niya, very, very protective po siya. Ayaw niya na maagrabyado, masasaktan o magugutom. Kaya nga po nagpunta siya sa ibang bansa para mabigyan ng magandang buhay ng mga anak niya. Maraming maraming salamat tatay. At bilang grandfather naman po kay Miguel, siguro naman po nakikita nyo ang ebidensya sa anak ko. Malapit po siya, maasikaso. At hindi hindi ginugutom o ano man ang hingin niya, lagi po yung nandyan sa kanya. Sabi at ang um, sa mga huling araw na, na nagkasama kami ang kahilingan niya po noon ay makauwi sa Pilipinas na hindi naman nangyari na gusto niyang makasama yung dalawang apo pa niya at saka anak niya sorry tatay at bilang asawa ni nanay lolit o ng nanay nakita ko po ang ang pagmamalasakit niya sa labing dalawang taon, nakasama ko siya. Respeto, lalong-lalo na po ang loyalty sa pagiging asawa. Sa, pagmama sa pagmamahal niya sa nanay lolit, lalo na sa pagdating sa pinansyal. At... Tama ang sabi ng tatay, ako nga ang anak niyang panganay dahil sa kanya ako nagmana na lahat ng sweldo binibigay sa asawa. 
ganyan po ka din ang rosukto ang tatay kahit po wala siyang laman ng bulsa salamat tay noong mga huling araw niya marami po kaming naging conversation minsan na lang iiyak siya at sabay yakap anak ang sabi niya bahala ka na sa pamilya ko at isa po dito ang mamimiss ko dahil naramdaman ko po ng mga oras din na yun na mahal din niya ako anak din niya ako salamat ay at isa po dito ay nagpapasalamat siya dahil sinabi niya sa akin na mamimiss niya ang mga tao na tumatawag sa kanyang tatay dahil sa tuwing sabi niya sa akin sa tuwing tinatawag siya na tatay natutuwa siya dahil nararamdaman niya ang respeto at pagmamahal ng anak na lagi niyang namimiss sana po hindi niyo po siya makalimutan na na siya po ay kinawag niyong tatay. Tinitreasure niya po yon, Maraming marami pong salamat. I love you, Tay. Tsaka lahat ng natutunan ko sa'yo sa mga huling araw mo. Alam mo na yon, Maraming maraming salamat. Um. Hello, hello again to all of you. Thank you for being here on my Tatay Efren's funeral mass. As we all know, my Tatay was taken from us much too soon last July 24, 2021. I'm not going to repeat the eulogy I said on his viewing last August 2nd, but just a recap about it. Some of you knew already he grew up in San Miguel, Pasig City, Philippines, and met my mom in their college days, got married at a young age of 21, and had uh, three children, in which I'm the eldest. He was an accountant by profession, but he went to Japan to work there in order to support us in our studies. He sacrificed himself to be away from his family to provide a good life for us. Tatay took care of my son, Miguel, since he was a toddler, up to the time that he was diagnosed with lung cancer. We often tease Miguel that we are jealous of him because he's the only one that Tatay took care of since he was a baby, because uh, Tatay is not there when me and my siblings are growing up. My son is lucky to have a caring and loving grandpa. He cooks for him all the time, tease him and joke around with him all the time. And I can see the love he has for Miguel and also for us too. Though he is not that showy, I know he loves us all. He is a family man and would do everything for us, his children. When my dad learned about his diagnosis, he was determined to get treatments and get better because he wanted to be with us and spend more time with us his family. But unfortunately, the cancer has spread already. His body became weaker and would not be able to handle any more treatments. Comfort care, as he decided on, is a hard choice for us, but we have to respect his decision. Since his diagnosis last May, he has been in and out of the hospital, but he only suffered for three months. My tatay was prepared as he had anointing by the priest three times um, in the hospital and then by Father Rome and Father Jerome. He made his peace with God. He just had a regret of not having to see my other two siblings in person. But he was able to talk to them almost every day until his recent passing. Tatay, 
I know your wish is to see my siblings and our family to be all together when you are still alive. But God has his reasons for everything. I just want to share to all of you our God's goodness and blessing to our family in the midst of all of this. My sister, Apple, lives in Manila. She applied for U.S. visa in the Philippines to come over here to see our dad and also to help us since our tata is terminally ill. That was back then when he was in the hospital. She even have a letter from my tata's oncologist vouching for the need for her to be here. But unfortunately, she was denied to have a visa. Tata was so sad about it and us too. But now, through God's grace, providence, and divine intervention, he showed us the way and led us to people who helped us willingly without anything in return. It was reconsidered and she was granted to come over here. During my, during, before my, a day before my tata's viewing, that's the time that we learned that she was granted to come over here. And do, during the viewing of my tata, um, that's the time they, that I booked her a flight to come over here. Everything was unexpected, and it, this is um, God's way of telling us how, how He loves us. She was granted to come over here and be able to attend our dad's funeral and be with our mom. Can you stand, Apple? And that's my sister, and she wanted to be here. This reminds me of my favorite song. It's, it says, All the while you hear each spoken need, yet your love, your love is way too much to give us lesser things. Because what if God's healing comes through tears and sleepless nights are what it takes to know He is near? And what if our greatest disappointments or trials and aching of this life are His mercies in disguise? He hears each desperate plea as long that we have faith to believe. God's, way, God's ways is beyond our understanding. He knows that my mom needs my sister to help her recover and adjust from the absence of our dad. God has his own ways of showing his love to us in the midst of our trials. His mercy never ends. Truly, how great is our God. Amen. In closing, I wanted to thank all of your friends, our family, for all your love, all out support, encouragement, care, and words of comfort over the last several months and days. It will always be remembered. Our family appreciate all of you so much. Finally, Tatay, Tatay Efren, your second daughter, my sister Apple, is here now. We know that it's your wish for her to come here. I know you help her and talk to God about her, and you are happy now where you are. Apple will be beside Nana and Loli to help us take care of her and recover from your absence. Nana will not be left alone now when we go back to work. Don't worry about us, Ty. I told you we will be fine. Your effort on raising us, your children, did not go to waste. We will take care of each other like what you did to us. We will cherish the memories you leave for all of us. We will never forget you, Ty. We love you and we will miss you so much. Thank you.
trusting in God, we have prayed together forever, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see him again and enjoy his friendship. All that we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another through the faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you. 